more than one pitch for strikes. He's got to be able to command a couple of pitches. If he can do that, he has a chance to be effective. Chuck Ingram gets us started. The Wichita State All-Conference transfer on a 60-degree cloudy day. It rained almost the entire morning, really leading up right until first pitch, but seemingly has cleared up. The reason why they pushed us back from four to six is Ingram has shown up here tonight and wants to swing early. He does, and he had two 93-mile-an-hour fastballs in very different locations, and not a breath of wind here. Very calm. If you hit one today, you're going to earn it because the air's a little bit heavy. Over top behind home plate once again, the battery here for Clemson as they are shifted heavily for the right-hander at the plate with the second baseman right on the shortstop side of the infield as the one-two pitch comes from Barlow and a late swing on a sneaky fastball at 92 miles an hour. Yeah, just nothing but heat from Barlow against uh, Ingram and uh, not able to catch up with any of his fastballs. And, and, I, and the key, that now that was pretty much down the middle, but uh, he moved them around pretty well. Kept it down, got elevated one, and, uh, and then that was pretty much down the middle, but really good movement. Brendan Jones, left-handed hitting power threat in the two spot for the Wildcats as he takes outside. Kansas State team coming off of a historic season, 35 wins. First 30 win year for Coach Hughes since 2021, but a little upset at how the year ended. Fourth place in the Big 12, not enough for a postseason bid. And, and that's one of the reasons they are here yep. in this part of the country, playing two quality programs in Tennessee yesterday, and of course, Clemson today. Jones drops the elbow and the skies one to Chufo and short center field territory, and the Georgetown transfer will make the grab as this Clemson defense has had ups and downs, but a clean weekend against South Carolina, seven errors in 10 games thus far. Well, and I think five or six of them were in, in one game. It was uh, a poorly played game, but a game that they were able to win. But uh, they played outstanding baseball over the weekend. Just very solid, didn't give up many free bases, pitched well, got some timely hitting, and that's how you win those big games. Well, we get to see the top prospect in Kalen Culpepper here. Preseason All-American after an honorable mention conference season a year ago as he takes high and outside. And Coach Hughes just beaming about Culpepper in our pregame yeah, cotton. Yeah, he heaped praise, praise on him. And, and uh, this is a young man that's got a very, very bright future in, this, in, the, in the game of baseball. Well, with the second baseman right shifted, it works to perfection as a nifty play and a great scoop over by Hinderleiter sends us to the bottom of the first here on this Wednesday night. Tremendous defense behind him. Second best in the Big 12 at a 982 fielding mark for the Wildcats as they will take on Clemson for the first time this century. And the first pitch to Canarella misses high and outside. That's a little dramatic. Yeah, you know, 1999, we can I have some you, fun with it. I got you, I got you. <laughs> Clemson 3 and 1 all time against the Wildcats. 3 and 0 here in the friendly confines for the Tigers as Canarella takes high and outside at 92 miles an hour. Defense playing straight up against the preseason All-American and Evan struggling with the zone here early. Yeah, all three of those pitches, it appeared that he just opened up his front shoulder just a little bit instead of driving it right down the line. Joshua better Clark, there. home plate umpire gives him the call as Evans comes off of a three inning, one run, outing in the win over UMass Lowell as Kenarella turns on one shallow center field. Jones will head there and ooh, Cam slides into first base. That looked awkward on the fly out to start the contest for him. A little, little muddy and the, you know, the, the tarp only extends so far and sometimes some water can, can get pretty close to the area and he, yeah, he was just oh. outside of where of where the tarp covered things, and it, it's wet. Yeah, it looked like the Something grass. to take note of. So Will Taylor comes to the plate, power hitting right-hander in the two spot for Coach Backich, as he'll take strike one from Evans. And I, you know, you look at that 188 batting average, and it's very, very deceptive. You know, this is a, a young man that's gonna swing the bat. He's got a really quick hands, a lot of ability. 
No doubt Homer here on Sunday against South Carolina. A 2-0 lead for the Gamecocks in the first inning. Taylor cut that in half in the bottom half. An eye on the 0-2 breaking ball. That was the first breaking pitch we've seen from Evans. Yeah, we were told that really slider curve combo throws in a cutter and a change as well as Taylor Similar recipe, he'll be careful rounding first, and Jones is there again. <laughs> Jones flanked by Ingram in left, English in right. We talked about Kansas State's shortstop leading the way, and the all-conference second baseman as well in Brady Day with a couple transfers on the corner infield. And Daniel Rivera, David Bishop, Rafael Pelletier, the catcher, this evening for K-State is Blake Wright, the captain, comes to the plate here with two outs in the first. Hmm. He's not wasting any time. Yeah, he just missed that one. Just a little bit late there. 92 mile an hour fastball from Evans. One of Wright's three home runs, a key insurance piece in the bottom of the eighth inning. Ended up meeting it on Sunday, didn't they, as yeah. South Carolina scored in the top of the ninth. Clemson able to hold on for the series sweep in a shortened two-game set as Wright takes a strike from Evans. Making his first start of the season. Had one start last year in six appearances for Andrew Evans. Coach Hughes mentioned he's hoping he could be a long guy for him, whether it be a midweek starter or out of the bullpen on weekends. Well, he has the prototypical pitcher's body at 6'5", and... You know, got a nice arm, keeps the ball hidden pretty well, and a live arm. Three fly balls in the bottom of the first inning as English in fair territory sends us to the second. All zero. And that gave them something in common, and they've been, been in contact ever since. Leggett celebrated a birthday yesterday. Said he had some good lobster. There's. Yeah. The coach as Brady Day takes ball one to start the second. This is creamed foul down the right field line. A 349 hitter from the left side of the plate. Looks like a little cutting fastball there on the inside part of the plate. About thigh high. And he was really, Day was just a little early on it. Barlow creates another ground ball up the middle. Chufo is there, and there's one out here in the second inning as Billy Barlow throwing strikes at an eight-pitch first inning with just three balls. Well, that's something that uh, you talked to Coach Bakich about earlier. He, I mean, it's it's imperative and that, you know, Billy throws strikes. And, and again, if he can throw strikes with more than one pitch, and Jimmy Ballinger is just, I think, an outstanding pitching coach for Clemson. Uh, he really emphasizes throwing two out of three. Th so throwing two out of three pitches for strikes. Got to have 66% strikes. Well, the freshman Nick English was sitting a strike on a fastball down the middle, and he's able to clobber one to left for the game's first hit. Now, we have a couple standout freshmen in the starting lineup for both sides. English for K-State, Naraki, and Nate Hall making his first start of the season for Clemson, a sophomore. There's a, it's a nice combination of youth and experience on both teams. DH Jaden Loebliner comes to the plate here. A bluffed run and a whiff tag, or else I think Hinderleiter might have had him. Well, it, 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 what you want to teach guys to do is Hinderleiter kind of reached around and was reaching for the runner. What you want to do is take the ball to the base. Take the ball to the base because the runner eventually has to come to the base. We mentioned it, this is a K-State team that is they addicted to, to stealing, right? 35 steals, averaging over three per game. And you know, it's something that was, uh, you know, a hallmark of Clemson baseball last year. And that, what, they have three or four steals this year, and it's a little bit different approach so far. That doesn't mean it won't change, but uh, Clemson has not been running nearly as much. Meanwhile, Loeb liner who came off the bench last season, has been a staple in the middle of this K-State lineup. Had a key game-tying home run against Holy Cross in their home opening weekend. 
Picked up the game-winning double later in that game as well, as you mentioned, Bellinger. And right on cue, he's going to come out and have a chat after a 2-0 start to the at-bat. Well, and I think it's it, interesting. I mean, it's the first time that Barlow is in the stretch. And, you know, the, part of the psychology of being a team that, that runs, that steals, it, it requires the pitcher to pay attention because, you know, people always look at the catcher. Oh, they stole on the catcher. No, 90% of the time you steal on the pitcher. Well, we've seen Overtop's arm from behind home plate, the Michigan transfer, as he's thrown out three this season. And this pitch is hit well to left center field. Mathis, it holds up in the wet air, and he makes the grab just shy of a warning track as... Deep sigh of relief from Barlow. That was a healthy cut on 2-0. Yeah, that was you know pretty good uh, exit velocity at 98. But uh, there will be no cheap home runs today. As I, as I said, not a not a breath of wind and a little the air's a little bit moist and heavy, and you're gonna have to get all of it to get it out of here. Brings up the Southern New Hampshire transfer in Daniel Rivera. As Barlow stumbled a bit on that wet dirt mound. Rivera, who has already gained some notoriety in Manhattan for stealing home in a tie game on that opening set against Holy Cross. Yeah, that's on the way on the top yeah, that's of that. remarkable. You, you just don't see that very often anymore. Right, you tell me late in the game, maybe in a blowout, it was a tie game with the bases loaded early in the game, and he swipes home. It was, uh, it was a fun highlight if you haven't looked that up. Mm. Foul tip into the glove, two and one. Boy, that that ball had some run, some late movement. It just darted down and in. That's what we were told Rivera. about, right? With Barlow, we, we mentioned yeah. that he's got that arm side sink, his natural fastball. Yep. He'll check with Hinder Leiter at first. And that's going to give you a lot of ground balls, and that's why it's essential that you have a, a solid defense with a pitcher like this. Clemson with a pretty... I mean, look at that four hole, just huge, huge hole. Ron, there's nobody playing second base right now. We oh. saw Wright make the play to end the first inning. He is again behind the second base bag as we take a look here. Yeah, and, and Hinderleiter holding on the runner. Just daring Rivera to go the other way as the 2-2 pitch comes. It's ripped the other way. It'll hold up, though, for Hull, and we will be off to the bottom of the second inning. Barlow throwing up a pair of ranked wins over the weekend. And even Coach Backich held back a bit of a smile when we asked him about what that weekend meant to him and meant to the team. As <laughs> Alden, excuse me, yeah. Matt it meant a lot, I, believe know. me. You know, there was no sense of uh, comfortability, though, from Backich in our conversation. He knows that every single time they come out with that 10 next to the name, there's other teams playing their World Series in, in a situation like this. Hey, well, even if they weren't ranked, it's Clemson. It's Clemson baseball, and the history here that Clemson has has been so good for so long, and a really outstanding job there by Mathis. He stays hot. Clean single to right from the left-handed bat, who is now hitting up over 270. As you take a look at the load, on the back foot, I was a left-handed hitter. I can see that being a good sign. Yeah, that was a good pitch that was right down the middle, and he gets gets that bad head out in front and drives it into the four hole. Well, now to a player who liked Backage so much, missed him last season. Jimmy Obertop made the transfer decision this summer. Last summer, I should say, to go from Michigan here to Clemson for his hey, final year. It look no. You know, not putting Michigan down in any way. Great, great school and all that. But if you have a chance to play baseball here, as opposed to Michigan, the, the weather, the environment, uh, I mean, they're, they're traveling every weekend, the first four yeah. weekends, and Clemson stays at home, and <laughs> it's, just, it's just a better situation, I think. Yeah, the Tigers haven't left their home state yet. No. Eight and one at home, nine and one overall in the midst of a seven game homestand that will continue against UNC Greensboro this weekend. As another bluff steal, seemingly a trend here today, has Mathis scurrying back. Richmond transfer over at first base. Well, you hear that a lot, transfer. Yeah, it's just, it's a new, it's a new day in college baseball and it, there he goes. Yeah. 
as he'll get away from Pelletier. Over top will jog over to second on the wild pitch. Yeah, really, uh, Pelletier, I, I'm not sure he handled that one really well. A lot of times the ball is in the dirt and they're taught to, to really get down and smother smother the pitch and, and, and keep it in front. Almost, you know, kind of carve it right back to home plate, but uh, he wasn't able to do that. All Big 12 last season for Rafael Pelletier behind home plate. As a four pitch walk puts Obertop on and Clemson's in business here in the second. Is that his first walk of the season? It is, it is. Just six innings for Andrew Evans. His first free pass issue. And now a tall task as one of the hottest hitters in the conference comes to the plate in Andrew Chufa. Well, it's just a great feeling when you're seeing the seeing the baseball really well as a hitter, and obviously Andrew is in in that mode right now. Defense thinking about a bunt. Chufo puts it down. Evans will fire to the covering day, and it's a successful one to four sacrifice. How about that, right? You come off of a walk-off home run Saturday, the game tying single on Sunday. And look at the applause in the dugout for Chufa. And look, yeah, that's exactly right. At that, you talked about the culture. That is the team aspect here. So you get you get the runner from second over to third with with less than two outs, and you get another runner in scoring position. And now it's incumbent upon uh, Noraki to put the ball in play, and then you, at least you get one run. Yeah, the infield is back for the 380 hitter. Boy, he's really had a nice start to his career here at Clemson. Go ahead, home run on Sunday. Wound up being the game winner as Naraki hit a no-doubter to left. Hmm. Three hits and seven at-bats over the weekend as he'll take low. He uh, started him off with a changeup, it appeared. 85 mile an hour changeup in the dirt. Ground ball gives Clemson the lead. Instead, it's a gapper. Deep left center field, looking up, and it's gone! The freshman strikes again. His third homer of the year gives Clemson a 3-0 lead. Yeah, fastball up and in. Daniel, that, he really did a great job. 91 mile an hour fastball, and he got his hands inside the ball, and his hands are quick enough to get it out front and drive that ball out to left center field. Exit velocity of 104. That ball was crushed. Look at the patience. Ready to unload. And the torque delivers. Yeah, he, he knew it was well hit. And again, this is that was well out. These, you hit a home run today, it's, it is well deserved. That replay gave you a good look at the level of rain. It is not necessarily pouring, but it's not drizzling either. As Jacob Hinderleiter, the Davidson transfer, comes to the plate. Takes a letter high strike from Evans, who will now have to settle down here, Ron. It is certainly something to come on the road in a midweek, get a clean first inning. Yeah. What's it like to get woken up in the second? Well, and, and it's always interesting to me to see a player, how he reacts after giving up a home run. And you hope that he looks the same after he gives up a home run, as he does after striking someone out. Jumps ahead in the count 0-2, and, and Hinderleiter able to spoil one. He has thrown a lot of fastballs to this point. Daniel might see him go to the breaking ball a little bit more here. But boy, that offensively for Clemson, those first four hitters executed just superbly. We talked about how key the bottom of the lineup has been as Hinderleiter does go around, says first base umpire Vincent Cratcher. And a couple of breaking balls in that at bat. Let's see, you guys can be the umpires here. Boy, that's, Let's get a that's side gonna be look. close. But he went, yeah. good, good call. Good that, call and a first strikeout for Evan. I think that's the toughest, yeah. if not it's one of the toughest, if not the toughest, call for umpires. To the bottom of the lineup in Nate Hall, who swings at the first pitch, a fastball, and fouls it back. He was ready for that and looking for that. I love a guy that goes up, I'm looking fastball, first pitch, and if I get it, I'm, I'm taking a good hack, and he did. An in-state kid who has just two at-bats this season. Hall played in 39 games last year and hit 243 with one home run. 
Pulls one to the left side where Rivera is there. Ooh. And ends the inning, but not before the... Kansas State did give one base away in that walk, and then a perfect sacrifice bunt, and then the deep ball by Naraki, and, and uh, a really good execution by the Clemson offense. We've seen both teams swinging at first pitches thus far as Pelletier gets a piece of overtop. A couple catchers exchanging pleasantries there as... A junior out of Canada named All-Conference Honorable Mention last season. Rips this one up the middle, off the diving glove of Chufo. Wright gives it a look, but Pelletier able to hustle out the single. Yeah, that ball was hit pretty hard up the middle and almost uh, almost a heck of a play by Chufo. And they, boy, they, they, they've really done these shifts effectively. You see that hit hard and just, he, he, he was there. Kind of went off the heel of his glove. Might have been the rare one, six, four, three ground out. <laughs> Do you think it hit? I think it might have got, I think it might have caught him. Barlow a little bit? Potentially, it looks like Barlow's all right. Hopefully it just caught the rubber. And so David Bishop, the TCU transfer at the bottom of the lineup for K-State now. Wildcats looking to prevent that shutdown inning. We talked about it so many times, right, Ron? How important is it? And what, and, and listen, that's, Billy, Billy Barlow is charged with the job of posting a zero, getting his team back into the dugout and swinging the bats again after getting that three nothing lead. And, and conversely, as you just said, Daniel, it's, I mean, Kansas State wants to, wants to answer. They want to answer back. Bishop, who was an all freshman two seasons ago, made the move this off season to stay in the big 12, but Head a little north to Manhattan as he'll take outside, but it's been a bit of a slow start hitting 206. That's why he's hitting. Not often you see a first baseman in the nine hole. I mean, it either speaks, it, it speaks to the strength of their schedule and or, or of their hitters in the other positions. Yeah, you know, they don't really have a lot of speed at the bottom. For a team that runs so much, there are a lot of power hitters. K-State, the only team in the nation with 20 or more home runs and 30 or more stolen bases. See if Pelletier, the catcher, has any motion. He does not, and it's fouled back. Boy, he was, he was on that pitch. Thus far, we've seen Billy Barlow not really change things up. He is coming right at these hitters, a, a lot, lot of fastballs. Fast That's exactly right, throwing a lot of fastballs. See if he goes back to it on 2-2. Two, two. It's a front door breaking ball that right. doesn't find its way across the plate. I think he fooled the umpire on that one, and I'm not, I'm not sure that, that Obertop did a very good job of... Yeah, our strike see. zone here has that yeah. right in the middle. Yeah, you can see that, that that was in the strike zone. Now a full count here with no outs in the third. This is driven well in the gap in left center as the catcher running will hold it second. Hmm. Taylor took a tumble as we see more instances of wet grass, and there's two on with nobody out. Yeah, really, uh, honestly surprising that Pelletier did not go, go to, uh, to third base, Ooh. especially with the, with the collision there. <laughs> you know, with everything in front of him. Well, and, and the, the, the thing you try, if, if the outfielder is running, directly toward where he is going to throw the ball. You have to be a little less aggressive, but he was not doing that, that's for sure. Coach Backage wants a check to make sure Taylor's feeling all right. It's been a bit of a dangerous start to this one for Clemson. Canarella slips yeah. on a fly ball, rounding first, and now Taylor forced to With jump out of the way of the sliding Mathis. Yeah, and that's that. You know, part of that is is you know normally you have Canarilla out there in center field, right? Maybe a little better communication between those two, but big moment here for K State as the Wichita State transfer Chuck Ingram takes a borderline ball. Now here's a difference in philosophy with with no one out uh, in the in the bottom of the last inning. Clemson man on first second, they laid down a perfect butt, and and here you've got the leadoff guy, and maybe they don't feel like that's what they want to do, but it's, it's just a different philosophy. No doubt about it. There's got to be a factor of coming on the road, 
looking for big innings, not giving away outs. But there is certainly some danger coming up next with Jones and Culpepper. You saw there in a moment ago, Ingram leads the team in batting average at 350. Yeah, and yeah, so that's probably why he's not bunting. But uh, good looking change up from Barlow there, just gotta throw it for strikes. Right, holding on Pelletier, here's a double play ball. Instead, Naraki will go to third. Fire across the diamond and a great stop by Hinderleiter on the fielder's choice. Yeah, really nice play by Hinderleiter. You don't, you just absolutely cannot let that ball get past you. Even though it might have been a pretty, pretty close play at first base, but he smothered that like a catcher. And then you'll also notice that uh, Hall was really busting his tail in to back up that play. So that's well executed by the Tigers. That's Nate Hall out in right field, showing the kids at home that you have to back up everything. And now Brendan Jones takes a strike a little high in the zone. Well, every time the ball is, is uh, hit, every single defender should be moving somewhere. Right now the defense looking for a ground ball. Clemson has turned seven double plays this season. A one is grounded, foul. Well located breaking pitch. Really hard to keep that ball fair. Well, you look at the top of this Kansas State lineup, and they just, I mean, it's, it's the team that can swing the bat. Joss misses outside on the 0-2. Both offenses we get to see Hitting over 300 this season. K-State would love to match that home run in the bottom of the second here. One, two, the off speed, and Jones is down on strikes. Well, that's, that is just a fabulous pitch, a change up that, that just sunk right out of the strike zone. You know, he's throwing 92, 93, and then he puts a well-located change up at the bottom of the strike zone. That's tough. Big strikeout. Now, a quick snap throw to second. You know exactly what Clemson was thinking there. Can we potentially get out of this inning without throwing to Culpepper? <laughs> Won the triple crown this offseason with the USA College National Team, did Kalen Culpepper. One of the top 20 prospects in the draft as well as he takes outside 1-0. Now, you can just see him. Not that he's skinny, but you can see him just maturing and filling out and continuing to have those the great explosive speed that he has. Another snap throw to second on an overzealous David Bishop. Hold on a second, they are calling an obstruction on Culpepper off the overtop throw and the inning is over. Wow. And just Man. like that, the threat extinguished. Staying in the lineup after slipping around first base in the bottom of the first inning. So he'll lead off this third. Andrew Evans still on the bump as he fires a strike. Oh, and two the count. So Kansas State robbed of their opportunity for a bounce back inning. How important is it to try to put up a zero here? Last yeah. night, last night Tennessee took advantage. You know, they were down two nothing were the volunteers, nine runs in the second and third, and that's how you uh that's how you run away from a game. Yeah. That's answering. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but again, you know, well executed by, by by Clemson defensively. They've been aggressive throwing the ball. Well, look at that. Culpepper a chance with the glove to make it look easy, didn't he? Oh my goodness. Canarella retired, continuing a, a bit of a limp there. He, uh, Culpepper, I loved, I mean, he ranges well to his left. That ball's well hit. He's able to get in front of it, snatches it, throws on the run. Hmm. Mercy. Yeah, that's that. It's that, that born that was, skill. You, you don't you can't learn that. I was just gonna say you don't you don't teach that. Well Taylor taking low and outside. He flew out to center in his first at bat against Evans. 
And that ball was hit hard. I mean, and once again, the huge shift for Kansas State. Yeah, Day, the second baseman, playing in the shortstop spot in double play depth right now. Evans, you know, I wonder if the home plate umpire is thinking, well, let's give Kansas State a couple calls here as Joshua Clark rules that a strike. Yeah, that was just maybe missed down a little bit, but. Evans not wasting any time. Creates another fly ball. This one will force English deep down the right field line to the wall, and it's off the wall. Taylor has the play in front of him, and he's thinking three to stand up triple for Will Taylor. Well, that is the advantage of playing at home and have that terrace, that small hill that starts about 15 feet out from the wall and a slight incline, and you'll you'll see him lose his, lose his uh, footing there a little bit. Ball's well hit, though. You know, here's a great look at how the ball travels less when the air is damp like this, because the line is 320. Our track man has that as a 345-foot hit. Hmm. So that means if the weather was oh. perfect, oh, this one slips. My goodness. And Taylor will score before the ball even gets to Pelletier's glove. Just a bit outside. <laughs> wow. So Clemson able to etch across a run here in the bottom of the third, and now the base is empty for Blake Wright. Daniel, wild pitch or pass ball? <laughs> we'll wait for the ruling. <laughs> Man, I mean... <laughs> Take gum. Will Chamberlain. Would <laughs> well, you follow that up with just a, like uh, yeah. just like Vaughn would with a fastball down the middle. Right. Just a bit outside. <laughs> See a lot of fly balls off the bat of Clemson here today as Bishop runs out of room up on that first base terrace. You know, I like I like Evans. I mean, he gave up the three-run dinger. Uh, he throws a pitch that's you know, ten feet high, and and then he comes right back and and gets up you know, on the next hitter with some really effective pitches. Wildcats have some bullpen action. We'll tell you about in a second as Wright fires one out to center and. Preston Martinez, junior righty, getting ready to come in for the Wildcats. Brings up Alden Mathis as we take a look at the bullpen. And, you know, we were told about Preston Ma Ma uh, Martinez here. Curious to see how the unorthodox delivery right. translates. And, and, and a lot of times you, you bring a guy in that's, that's very much different than the previous pitcher to, uh, just, to just to change the look and, you know, in... That's well hit. Oh, Mathis, a no-doubter up to the Cajun Cafe, and it's over, everybody. 5 nothing, Clemson. Mm. Well, Evan's trying to change speeds. It's a, it's a change-up, but it's not a very well-located change-up. Probably the worst place you could put a change-up up and in, and Mathis did not miss it. You can see it just kind of hung there, and that was no doubt. That was well out of here. 105 mile an hour exit velocity and traveled for over 400 feet. Well struck. 28 degree exit angle for those analytic fans at home. And now 24 home runs hit this season for Clemson as you see the metrics up top. Brings up Jimmy Obertop. You know, it, it, it's always kind of hard to take a guy out of a ball game when he's only walked one guy. Uh, now, and, and he's been hit around a little bit, but, uh, you know, you're already down five to nothing. I would think this would be his last inning. I think he'd probably like to get him out of here, uh, out of this inning, but this is probably will be it for him. He is at pitch uh, 47, so that certainly is not a factor. Ooh. Thought he got out of the inning there. Instead, it's two and two. Yeah, just missed there. Kansas State 
a busy week, had to fly halfway across the country. Played in Knoxville yesterday, drove down here about three hours plus this morning, and then they've got to drive two hours to Atlanta, fly back to Kansas, and start their Big 12 season against the newcomer in Cincinnati on Friday. It's a healthy hack. Well, with, with the way the leagues are spread out all over the country now, it's just remarkable to me. Uh, it, it, I'm not sure it does the student athlete much of a favor. Uh, How about next year when they've got Arizona and Arizona State and Utah? Yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, it's got to be tough, tough on those kids to miss class. Well, Evans puts a good final mark on this third inning and potentially the end of his start. Clemson strikes again. Three. Yep, she threw wow. a complete game yesterday, what, but a nine inning loss to Tennessee. What a player she is. What a great competitor she is. She, I mean, pitch, hit, oh my. She, she is special. First pitch strike to Brady Day. If you want to continue watching some Clemson sports tomorrow, a double header for the ladies across the way, starting at four o'clock against Power Five team in Minnesota, right here on the ACC Network Extra. I'll be with uh, Scott Whitlock for that one, which is, if you haven't watched a Scott Whitlock production, it's pure entertainment every single second. I got introduced yesterday in uh, the Clemson, Tennessee showdown, and yeah. <laughs> they, they, they didn't want enough of them, so they went to extra innings just to get a yeah. little bit more Scott yeah. on the broadcast. The Buffalo Wild Wings button there. As Day is ready for the 0-2 from Barlow. Have to think that Kansas State knows that they're running out of opportunities before this Clemson team might keep adding numbers, huh? Well, they need somebody to go out there and post a zero after, you know, giving up five into second and third. Hmm. Take by Day. See that pitch count for Barlow. Still very much, very much in control right here. James Hall, oh, a filthy swing and a miss there for a strikeout number three for the righty. When we talked to Baggett, she wanted the strikeout to walk ratio, of course, to be somewhere in that two to one, but he wants the strike percentage to be at 60. Wait, look at that grip and the down and away movement. Boy, what a nice pitch by Barlow. I mean, that's why he was their opening day starter. I was going to say. like that. Yeah, yeah. through two starts. Seven innings, a win on opening day against Xavier. Hit hard in that lopsided loss to Kennesaw State, but just two walks in those two outings. And the base on balls have been kept to zero here thus far as the freshman English. Hmm. Slider. Well, he is very much in control. I mean, that was not, I mean, it was a ball, but it was a very well located pitch. Started on the outside corner and just broke off the plate. English. Another one. Single in his first at bat, making his ninth start of the young season. Yeah, and this is one of few hitters he's gotten behind. Yeah. A little just, he, he didn't, he was not happy with that pitch. Now he's got to refocus, take a deep breath. And it went back to the changeup. Hitters count here in the middle of the lineup for the Wildcats. Started their season in Arizona. Went two and two with a true road loss against Arizona State. Before a couple wild ones against Holy Cross. And that was a borderline pitch that awards English the one out walk. Brings up low liner. Ground ball up the middle. The one time they don't shift. Chufo is there, but his flip is a little late. And Kansas State has a few base runners here yeah, in the fourth. Really good point. I mean, the, the, the Clemson infield has shifted significantly for every, every hitter. And, and they moved a little bit there. You can see how wet. Good, good diving stop 
just, you know, I think if he gets it cleanly out of his glove that first time, they're able to get him. Brings up Daniel Rivera here. The second inning in a row for K-State with two on and less than two outs as Rivera takes a strike at the knees. We talk oh. about a veteran hitter here. Yeah. Played in the D2 College World Series last season and was named an All-American as well with Southern New Hampshire. Mm. Off balance, and that just shows how Barlow's able to fool the hitters thus far. Yeah, and he has really gone more and more to his off-speed stuff. And staying with it. A key take on the breaking ball with Pelletier waiting on deck. Both of these teams have seen big leads evaporate in their favor. Kansas State had a couple key comebacks in February. Of course, we know Clemson, seven comeback victories out of their nine wins. So this game far from over with the bats that the Wildcats have. Here's a better look at our military uniforms tonight as Barlow misses low two and two. We've got military appreciation night on Friday for the gymnastics team against Air Force as well. Should be a fun week on campus, a lot of action as Barlow paints the perimeter, gets the second out via the K. Generous strike zone. But, you know, all you really ask from an umpire is, is consistency. And, you know, I think that Overtop did a really nice job framing that kind of surreptitiously. So Pelletier, who singled to start the third. And a ground ball up the middle, he'll take inside. Three walks generated yesterday by Pelletier. He has now reached in 15 straight, dating back to last season. As Barlow hits the breaking ball and misses low. Showing a lot of confidence out there, Ron. And I'm curious, there had to have been a conversation when Friday's game gets rained out, Bakich elects not to use the Friday starter, instead push him here to a Wednesday game. And if anything, it almost rises the occasion against the top team in K-State. Well, and I think that was a factor. You know you have a, a, a big game on, on Wednesday, and that way you don't disrupt the entire uh, starting rotation uh, by pushing, pushing them back. And, so, you know, they chose to, to keep their normal starters and it worked quite nicely, obviously. Meanwhile, Barlow has lost the zone and now has a pitch clock violation that will walk the hitter and load the bases with two outs. So two walks this inning after none through three. And it's the TCU transfer in David Bishop. You talk about you put a, a first baseman in the nine spot. Yeah. It'll work out here for K-State. As we take a look at the clock, hit zero. Yeah. That was ball four anyway. So Bellinger. I think, yeah, I think they just want to Settle him down a little bit. Say, look, you're, 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 you're really pitching well. You're only at pitch number 60. Get this last out for us, young man. Well, the bullpen is empty for those curious. This is Barlow's mess to get out of. As Joshua Clark will. Break that up, and now, now we think about it. What are you thinking pitch-wise? You, you kind of have to think about a ball in the dirt, but with a five-run lead, it's not the end of the world yeah. letting one in. Right. Well, Fourth threat at the plate. Uh, this is your number nine hitter, and, and you know he's only hitting 206. He did get a hit his first time up, but nice so shot. off speed. Goes fishing on the first pitch with Chuck Ingram on deck.
Bishop will call time. You have to imagine the Wildcat fans at home. How many opportunities are you going to get on the road? You had two on last inning and squandered it. Base is loaded here and Bishop drops the elbow. Foul territory for Naraki. And the Wildcats will live to see another pitch. You see that big, the big roof on the, the Clemson dugouts. The renovations here at Doug Kinsmore I guess completed, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago. But uh, just huge improvement. Dugouts are bigger than a lot of houses. Yeah, if you haven't made it out here, truly a spectacle to behold. The college baseball landscape as Bishop flies one out to right. Hall lines it up. And another inning, stranding base runners for Barlow. He is through four scoreless here on this Wednesday afternoon to sink and run on his fastball and actually doesn't, it appears that he doesn't even look at home plate until the very last second. Yeah, Coach Hughes calls him Pedro Martinez because of his ability to make hitters look foolish <laughs> as we get to see the meat of this Clemson lineup. Chufo Naraki Hinderleiter in the fourth inning against the relief pitcher. Just spent some time in Tennessee if you're wondering where Dyersburg State is. Ooh, that one comes in, hits the, the glove and came out. Must have just missed Chufo's arm guard. Yeah, it sure looked like it hit his Chufo's left elbow, but apparently not. When you're hitting like Chufo is, you don't want to get hit by a pitch right now. Swinging a hot bat, but gets sawed off by Martinez, who will underhand it to first for the first out. That's, I need a little more patience there on a guy, guy that has a, uh, kind of a funky delivery. And so we rewind to the second inning when the freshman Nolan Naraki lifted the lid on the scoring here on this Wednesday with a three run shot to left, his third home run of the season. Oh boy, every time I see that swing, I just like it more and more. It's a great job of on a pitch that's up and in a little bit, a 93 mile an hour fastball that's up and in. Great sinking action from Martinez to get ahead of the count. And you can, just a great view from behind home plate. Martinez with that unusual delivery. Kind of turns his back on home plate. Impossible to pick up the ball. All he's done is come in and throw strikes. Naraki, red shirt freshman. And there's his, there's his slider. Third generation college baseball player, a dad and grandfather in the community as Naraki watches one paint the outer half and a friendly call gives Kansas State a second out. And, and as I mentioned, I like consistency. And, and Clemson got one of those calls last inning and, and Kansas State gets one here, and that just might have been barely on the corner. But with, you know, when you've got two strikes, you've got to protect, you know, fight it off and live to see another pitch. Two outs for Hinderleiter, the eight hitter. Struck out swinging against Evans and takes high and outside. Bottom of this lineup has just been so good here over the past two weeks. Hinderleiter, who had the key home run, in the eighth inning on Saturday in Columbia. Set things up for Clemson to run away with it, but then South Carolina had that big ninth inning, forced extras before Chufo's heroics. Now there's a close call. Goes Clemson's way two and one. Just missed. And there's, you know, that one and one pitch. You either throw a strike and it's gonna be one and two, or you throw a ball and it's two and one, and what a difference that makes in terms of how effective you are as a pitcher. Got to throw strikes. Two, two, rip the other way and under the diving glove of Bishop for a two out single. Uh, yeah, I just, I love guys that just play pepper with the ball. They get down, maybe they have two strikes on him. You can see he's not trying to do much, he just says, okay. 
hits it pretty hard. 100 miles an hour off the bat. Yeah, but did you know? Didn't try to pull it. Hit it in that magic hole, that four hole. So Nate Hall comes to the plate, 0 for 1 today with that ground out in the second. He'll swing at the first pitch, nubs one out to center, long run for Jones and Day, and it falls in no man's land. Hall is thinking two and slides head first with a two out double. Well, really good job by Hall of getting out of the box immediately. He knows he's got a chance. Look at him, you see immediately. He knows he's got a chance to drop it. He's thinking two right off the bat, especially when the infielder picks the ball up, the second baseman. Day picks the ball up, going away from second base. So he has to get the ball, plant his feet, and then make a good throw to second base. So really good base running by Hall. The top of the lineup and Canarella. So he'll take outside as Martinez's clean start to this outing has muddied up a bit here with two outs. Hard hit single by Hinderleiter, a bloop double, and Canarella will ground it today. Martinez does get the clean fourth inning. And off to the fifth we go. He is maturing and, and uh, you know, a guy that really is a really good pitcher, is a guy that can pitch when he doesn't have his best stuff. And Chuck and I think, Ingram able to fire that one. I think he's, you know, he has the ability to do that now, but solid hit from Ingram. Talk about a ball smoked, 114 off the bat, and you can see the wetness coming off that ball yep. as it entered the outfield. And so for what has been the fourth consecutive inning, Kansas State will pick up a base runner. And Barlow will work from the stretch to Brendan Jones, who looks to bunt, dribbles it foul. Yeah, and I think, you know, being down 5 nothing, only in the top of the fifth, you still can be aggressive stealing bases. If it's the eighth inning and you're down five, you certainly don't steal a base, or maybe even the seventh. But here in the fifth, you still want to play your game. Ingram three for three this season. Swiping bases, and now Jones behind in the count 0-2. And, and you mentioned Barlow, just a sophomore. He had 57 innings two seasons ago as a freshman. Right. Red-shirted last year with just three innings pitched. And now has earned that Friday starting spot nod, which... He was opening day starter. That's, that's huge praise for an underclassman. Went five innings. Two unearned runs, two strikeouts, no walks in the win over Xavier. And got hit hard on opening Friday against Kennesaw State in that 18 to one game. As Jones takes outside, maybe a bit of a cross up there with Obertop. Third time through the lineup for the top of this Wildcat batting order. They have been able to hit, but not score. Count evens. Yeah, he ran away from that one. If we get a replay on that pitch, he really opened up his front shoulder. He's thrown some nice change-ups. But that one, he just hurried a little bit. That might be a function of a being, having a guy on first base. Fly ball, left field line. Taylor in fair territory, lines it up. And Ingram will stay put at first. So that's what we've seen from Kansas State. What does it tell you when you see a team hit a lot of fly balls? Well, I mean, it depends on the type of pitcher. Barlow's a guy that usually gets a lot of ground balls, ground balls, but uh, maybe they're overswinging a little bit. Yeah, five fly outs, two ground outs thus far. As Kalen Culpepper ruled out on the batter's interference with two on, two out in the third inning. He's 0 for 2 today. Really had his at-bat robbed from him as he jumps behind the count 0 and 2. It answers the question for those curious when you obstruct the catcher trying to throw down, the hitter is the one that's out. Called out, correct. Nah, yeah, Ingram's gonna go to second. 
And the throw out into center field. Ingram's gonna take a leap. And it pays off as he goes first to third on the steal and error. A good read off, of, off the ball in the dirt with Ingram. You can see that the ball is well short of home plate. And just a rushed throw that, that really the throw was unnecessary. He was not going to get him. That's, that's a ball that you're better off eating. And there you go, the 36th stolen base there for Kansas State, leading what is a wacky looking scoreboard with all of those newcomers, Cincinnati, Houston, added to the Big 12 this season. That's where Kansas State will start their Big 12 campaign against Cincinnati this weekend. They'll head out to Houston in a few weeks as well. Hard hit ground ball, Chufo gets the high hop, and a run scoring grounder from Culpepper puts Kansas State on the scoreboard. So, and against, once again, if, if if Obertop just eats that ball that's in the dirt. I mean, you got a guy at second base, he's still at second base, now with two outs and it takes a base hit uh, to get him in. But that's the kind of thing that you address as a coach later, and it's the kind of thing that's gonna be in the gap. Yeah, that's a thing of beauty from Day, fading away from Mathis. Finds the wall in the Big 12 Player of the Week a few days ago, finds his way for a two out double. And Ron, I'll push up a little bit against you there. I think if Culpepper was at the plate with a runner at second and one out, there might have been a different result. But he knew he just needed to score that run. Right. Picked up the RBI Stand ground. And, yeah, that, that might be. I'm just going to give him a little bit of credit. Okay. Well, and so Brady Day able to extend the inning as well. Yeah, as it, as it turns out, it would not have mattered. Right. And a chance for Nick English, who has reached both times against the righty in Barlow. Looking to qualify for the win, one out away. Yeah, he might be starting to labor just a little bit. Plenty of rest with the weekend off for Barlow. So you have to imagine that the tank has a little bit extra juice in it, but Something tells me this may be his final batter. Power hitting low liner at the plate who singled his last time up as Clemson's bullpen starts to warm. There's Lucas Malstead. Chance for a two-out ribby for English. This takes a 2-0 hack. And you can see Clemson infield playing quite deep, as they should. Their job is to keep the ball in the infield. They need to get dirty, anything, to keep it in the infield on a ground ball. Three and one the count now to English. Arlo, who has pitched out of the stretch in every inning after the first. Yeah, he really looked good in that first inning. Fills the count. Some diehard fans here dealing with the elements. A game that was pushed back two hours. Poncho guy had the right idea. Yep. Payoff pitch, got him swinging. A key strikeout, the fifth for Barlow, as Kansas State. They look happy. Yeah, you'll see Despite it in a the minute. Weather. That's where Alden Mathis' home run cleared back in the third inning as Mathis is due up in the hole. It's Taylor Wright Mathis for Clemson against Preston Martinez here in the fifth. As K-State got one back in the top half. Taylor coming off of his triple in the third. Scored on the wild pitch. 
<laughs> Very wild pitch. He hit the bull. Meanwhile, the seven game homestand has so far just lasted a game and a half and Taylor, Wright, and Mathis all have home runs here this week at home. As that was a borderline pitch that yeah. goes Taylor's way and a hitter's count here at 3-1. Well, I think he's got to be sitting fastball here. There it was. So again, just outside. Half. Lead off walk for the Tigers as they look to add insurance midway. Those two or three words that you just uttered are the bane of a coach's existence. Lead off walk. You know, funny enough, yesterday on the softball telecast, we had the legendary Tennessee head coach and Ralph Weekly on. And it was a great chat. If you go back, you can watch it in the third and fourth inning. We asked him, how often in your 35 years has a leadoff walk scored? He said every single time it felt. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it, it is, you know, I've heard percentages, and I'm sure that they've done the analytics on it, but I, I, I swear it's 75%. I mean, it, it just, it's remarkable. As opposed to a leadoff base hit, you know? Right, which you, you feel I, I like would grow yeah. momentum, but you talk about the negatives that it portrays on the pitcher's side of things when yeah. you start an inning with four wide ones as Blake Wright a couple flyouts today. Ooh. Able to square one in the wrong direction, and it's 0 and 2. He hit that one well. Brad, a good swing at it. Had it well timed. Anytime you foul a ball that it goes directly back, the timing is, is correct. Defense pinched towards the middle for a ground ball, and right goes after her. Bit of a frisbee up and away for out number one. Yeah, that's the breaking pitch that, that you're going to... Home run as a Tiger for Mathis, the Richmond transfer who had nine last season for the Spiders. This will take well outside and... We remind you, I'm sure you've heard about it if you follow Clemson, but Mathis was drafted by Baltimore in 2022. In the 19th round, he bet on himself and... Looks to put together a fun run here in the ACC. You know, listen, uh, you know, pro ball is work. You know, minor league baseball, it's, that's, it, it's, it's not an easy life. He has to have a little bit of fun in Clemson first. Well, and, and I mean, just the, the way they're treated, the way they eat, uh, where they stay, um, you know, how you travel. All of, all of that is very much different, especially in the lower minor leagues. Of course, his first plate appearance as a Tiger, a grand slam opening weekend against Xavier. Yeah, that How was about cool. it? <laughs> Welcome to the team. It's been a year filled with grand slams, hasn't it? Three already for Clemson. Oh. They had four all of last season. Two now to Mathis with a runner at first. Yeah, we'll see. I would think Taylor would be on the move here. He is moving, and the throw is a moot point as a pair of walks. Have two on with one out in the fifth inning for Jimmy Obertop. They get into some dangerous territory. K-State lost 15 to five last night against yeah. another top 10 team in Tennessee. We're in uh, nuclear overload warning territory for that Wildcat bullpen. And again, if, if you, boy, this walks, can they just you cannot give free bases. Must attack that strike zone. That bullpen just starting to Move. Yep, they're gonna there we go. show, and this is gonna be two for two with me referencing TV shows now this week. But it's it's called Las Vegas, and that was the intro song for it. Ah. So with two on and one out, the 1-0 comes to Obertop. Good pitch. It's exactly what you need after the meeting. Right. Settled himself down. Obertop with a big opportunity here to 
really blow this game open a little bit. Two home runs on the season for the Michigan transfer who has 31 in his career. And I think that's a testimony to how he feels about Coach Backage. Yep. You know, I'm curious, and I'm sure people have asked, and I'm sure he's given a very politically correct answer. I'm curious what the difference was from 2022 to 2023 in that Michigan dugout. Huh, well. But with the new coach there, Tracy Smith. No, it's not a bad guy. I'm just he's, curious he's, the difference. Yeah, I've, I've known him for years and years. And I started at Miami of Ohio and, and ended up going to IU and then to Arizona State. And, and he is a fine coach and a fine man. But nonetheless, you know, it doesn't take away the relationship that Obertop had with, with Coach, Coach, Coach Backage. Oh, way to battle back from Martinez. Powers a fastball at 84 right down the pipe. He second out. Because, because of the unusual way that he delivers the ball, that 84 is just a little tougher to pick up. He really never looked real comfortable in that at bat. And we're going to have a change now. So a new pitcher will come in for Kansas State this season. 14 strikeouts, three walks, and quickly the pressure adds as Wentworth comes in and faces Chufo with two on and two out. Sack punt in the second. Ground ball back to the pitcher in the fourth for Chufo, who takes outside. Starting him out with a breaking pitch. Slider, 88 mile an hour slider. Speed in the base paths with Taylor at second, Mathis at first, 2-0 count. Well, you gotta be looking fastball here. Don't try to do too much with it. Just looking for that base hit. Defense playing straight up as Chufo fouls it back. A 351 hitter this season is the Georgetown transfer. And he's, he's played really solid shortstop as well. He's been a great addition to this club. Base runners belonging to Martinez. Nice breaking action on the inner half, evens the count. Yeah, a little back, back door slider. Caught the inner, inner uh, part of the plate. Twos are wild with two on, two out, and a 2-2 pitch coming. Got him swinging. Wentworth comes in from the pen and sends us to the sixth inning as K-State gets their own shutdown frame here on the ace. That, uh, you know, brings it from a uh, low three quarters. Some people say from Laredo. And, uh, I mean, that plays. How do you hit that? Yeah, that's, that's pretty nasty. Lobliner leads it off, followed by Rivera and Pelletier here in the sixth inning for K-State. I'll tell you what, this game has certainly felt like Kansas State has added base runners in every inning, and right on cue, a leadoff hit from Lobliner. Yeah, and that ball, you know, what do you do? You know, you just say, hey, he dumped one in there. You know, the ball was not hit hard. 63 mile an hour off of the bat, so. So we call cue ball to right pocket there. That's how you get things started, though. So quickly into the stretch goes Malstead, a transfer from Wofford, where he had a 2.69 ERA and six saves last season. The very massive work. Foul. Yeah. Really right. got a lot of innings in for them out of the out of the bullpen. So he's he's an experienced player and a great addition to this Clemson bullpen. Last pitched on Saturday, when an inning allowed a few runs late against South Carolina. Six innings this season. Three strikeouts, two walks for Malstead. This will check to first. Lobliner has not attempted a stolen base yet. A one hit the other way right into the vacant spot. 
with the shifted right, and first to third goes low blinder. So a few pitches into the sixth inning, and runners are at the corners with nobody out. Well, again, you get a blooper and a ball that's hit on the ground that normally would be a double play ball. Sometimes the shift works, sometimes it doesn't. Clemson looking for that double play. They'll, they'll certainly sacrifice that run. We have now seen four consecutive innings where the Wildcats have put two on with less than two outs. Just one run to show for it as Rafael Pelletier jumps after that change up right down the middle and a little early on it. Mm -hmm. hard, to keep, yeah, hard to keep that pitch fair. That's true. So as a pitcher, are you less worried when the balls hit hard because you know you can't really keep that fair? I mean, as, as a coach, I'm, I'm thinking, well, look, he, you know, uh, Malstad's doing his job. He's, he's got, giving up a blue pit, and ooh, that's going to be. That's a skyscraping fly ball to right. Hall is under it. Low blinder will tag, and the throw comes to second. It's a result of the score, and so Kansas State able to double their total, and it's 5-2 in the sixth on the sack fly by Pelletier. I mean, that ball was hit harder than any other ball so far and uh, resulted in and out. So sometimes as a coach, you look, you see a guy and he's, he's throwing strikes, he's moving the ball around, you give up a blue hit and then a ground ball that, that finds a hole. And, and, you know, so you stay with the guy a little bit longer. Someone might say, well, get him out of there. He's giving up hits. Well, no. I mean, he's, he's doing his job. So David Bishop, single in the third, fly out to strand the bases loaded in the fourth. K-State has left runners on base and all but one in it. Pretty quick feet there. Yeah. This is a, a team in Kansas State that doesn't disguise their designs. They have 36 <laughs> stolen bases this season. And openly <laughs> say, we're, we're going to run. Well, that's a knee buckler for strike one. Top of the lineup, due up next with Chuck Ingram. You know, Malstead, I mean, he's, he's a big kid. Long and lanky, and then he throws from, from down under like that. And there's another ground ball. Chufo has one play, a chance to turn two, and it olays past the glove of Hinderleiter and a fielder's choice that stays in play and keeps Bishop at first. Yeah. Well, that was a, a very unlikely double play. Uh, quick turn from right. Now, I, I'm not sure if the good throw, they wouldn't have had him. But, uh, you can see the ball is hit in the hole. Jufo was with pretty good, pretty good feed. I think he was going to be safe anyway. Yeah. Agreed. Nevertheless, we have seen strong defense displayed by Clemson here today. The one error on the stolen base throw into center field. Last inning really generated Kansas State's first run as Ingram. The recipient of that stolen base. And he'll take a front door slider for ball one. Chuck Ingram named the 20th best outfielder preseason by D1 Baseball. First time, first team all conference two years in a row in the American with Wichita State. As this one elevates a little bit, very similar pitch to the first one. Yeah. Hinderleiter ends the inning. Kansas State, though, continues to chip. A sack fly by Pelletier, cuts into the... Easton just let us know a, a, a tough fact. There is not one player on the field, Ron, that was alive the last time these two teams played in 99. Yeah. That's hard to swallow. For me, it is. Yeah. I mean, I'm not happy about it either. I was alive. I was kicking. I had just seen my Marlins win the World Series in 97. Just got potty trained in 95. You know, yeah, we, were, we, were right. getting, we were getting I in the you. groove. Is Nolan Naraki a freshman? We don't want to talk about his birth year. Well, I'll tell you what. I sure like the way he swings to bat. He, and, and he's solid at third base. He had one game where he, he struggled, made a couple of throwing errors. 
He had some poor footwork. The wind was really howling, blowing in his face from uh, first out towards left, and, and I think it kind of affected his the way he approached his throws, but uh, he's been really good for just a freshman. He's He's been outstanding. 379 coming into the day. Woo. Three run shot back in the second. A little early on the 2 1, and the count evens. Yeah, he was looking fastball there. You know, I think after hitting a home run, you really have to discipline yourself and stay within your approach. Full count here to start the bottom of the sixth inning. You know, the way that Kansas State has been chipping away and all of the testament and praise towards this man and Pete Hughes, it certainly feels like five runs may not be enough here tonight. And Clemson knows it as Naraki goes the other way and a four to three put out starts the half inning. You ever have games as the coach that you kind of felt that you scored early, but the right. other team started chipping and they had right. oh, yeah. every inning? No kidding. You have to keep the pressure on. No question about that. That's why we talked about uh, how, how important it was for Martinez to not only get out of that half inning, but then post a zero the next inning to give this uh, very potent Kansas State offense an opportunity to produce some runs. To the eighth spot in Hinderleiter. Started his undergrad, the same spot that Pete Hughes played over in North Carolina at Davidson. Davidson. Beautiful school. In fact, Hughes was a two-sport athlete. He talked about his yeah. football memories, facing your stomping grounds in Furman a few times. Boy, Wentworth looks very solid to this point. The big K to get out of the inning last inning. And, yep. Called third strike, second strikeout, and three at-bats for Wentworth. And there's two up, two down here in the bottom of the sixth. And then working out front and getting a good, good, good call here on a breaking pitch. So the final chance in the sixth inning is Nathan Hall. Bloop double on a hustle attempt in the fourth. Round out back in the second as he takes ball one. His job is, I, mean, I know there's two outs, but you know, you just try to turn this thing over. Turn this lineup over and you, you know, you, boy, you get Cantarell and then Taylor up there, get some runs in a hurry. Three runs in the second inning, two runs in the third. Kansas State added one in the fifth, one in the sixth. That's where we stand. This Big 12 ACC showdown. These teams faced three times in the 90s. Clemson won all three. All here. As the count pushes to three and one. takes high. Two out walks, never pleased any coaches, did they? No, and, and I was just thinking if he does walk him, you know, we talk about the leadoff walk. It, it seems as if the leadoff walk or the two out walk are the ones that really, you know, get you going or, or you know, hurt a team. Those those free bases are, are huge. Boy, if you look at how deep this outfield is playing. Now, as they should be with two outs and a runner on on first base, but uh, Jones and center field very deep. English practically on the terrace. Yeah, there's a look. And Ingram also very deep. So they're, they're, this, that's a no doubles defense, which is, is by the book. I'll tell you what, Hall bluffed on a stolen base on that first pitch. Canarello took. Yeah. Not sure Canarello was too happy that it was a yeah. bluff because that was a really good pitch to hit. <laughs> Body language told the whole story there. And so the count 0-1. Another bluff from first. Beautifully spotted breaking ball in the bottom of the zone. 
Yes, that was a, a really nice, really nice pitch. K-State's bullpen looking to put up a third zero and now oh. a steal, uh, wow, a steal by Hall could not have been timed better. And then Hall was thinking about going to third, but yeah. kind of ran into Culpepper at second. I'm surprised that there was not an obstruction call. I, I, I don't think he was aware that the ball was at the backstop. And he may have had a chance to make it, but I, you know, with, with two out. Yeah. Can't make the third out. Don't third want base. to make that third out at, 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 at third base. Nevertheless, a run scoring opportunity here out of thin air for the Tigers as the count evens two and two. Second stolen base of the season for Hall. Canarella, deep to center. Ranging back Jones, he leaps up and robs him of a home run! What a grab by the Southpaw! Standing play, but uh, five solid innings for Billy Barlow. Uh, gave up only six hits and did a really nice job and a couple of big home runs. And the Tigers got off to the 5 nothing lead, but Kansas State creeping back into this game. It's a three-run ball game. Well, they talk about it. It's baseball magic. You make a play in the field, you're almost always due up that next that half happen? inning as Jones takes outside. I love it. Got to calm the heartbeat, though. His dugout reacted like they just won the game, hoping to turn that into some momentum as Jones rips it up the middle. Chufo is there. Smooth play. Wow, that was nice. And, and there the shift was just perfect yep. because that, that was destined for center field had he played a normal shortstop position. Now, being a left-handed hitter, he might have been pulled over a little bit, but he was over quite a ways, and but he really... Showed some range there. Very nice play. Chufo's been solid. Talk about baseball gods. You give and you take. He yeah, hit the yeah, ball no as kidding. hard as he could there. Yeah. 106 off the bat as Culpepper takes inside. I think that's a little deceptive. Ground balls appear to, uh, uh, I, I think the velocities are inflated okay. a little bit. Good breaking Ground ball. ball. Inflation. Yeah, I, I mean, you're right. I, I could see it. Malstead out there for a second inning of work. Working out of a jam, allowing one run last frame, and now a Frisbee slider has Culpepper off balance one and two. Yeah, even with the one run that was given up last inning, I mean, again, you had a, a blue pit, a ground ball hit, and then the sacrifice flies. So, I, I mean, that's why he's out there again. Try to steal an extra inning out of the bullpen. For a workhorse. From Wofford. And a gorgeous slider. Culpepper frozen for the second out of the seventh. Boy, you talk about location. That was just perfectly located. Started on the inside part of the plate, broke to the outside part of the plate, and was right at the knee. Just, just a gorgeous pitch. You can see the rain continuing to fall. It is a light drizzle. An awesome job of framing from Obertop as Brady Day takes low. Coming off of a double in the fifth inning for the left-handed hitting second baseman. You know, it feels like we've moved back in as we see the, the rain. You know, we started as a four o'clock start. Precautionary weathermen decided that the rain was due to stop around five. Yeah. And I think it was the right call because it was oh. it was pouring at four o'clock. No, it was a good call and they're gonna, yeah, I mean, they're, they're just really light showers and this is just the last edge of, of this huge storm system that's moving from west to east. Nice pitch on 3-0. Make sure to keep tabs, whether it be at Clemson Baseball on Twitter or just texting friends because this weekend could be a little fluid. Friday, 4 o'clock, Saturday, 2, Sunday, 2 against UNC Greensboro. And I know there's weather in the area expected, so just make sure 
especially this time of year that you don't want to show up to a game that has been moved or postponed. As we take a look at the schedule this upcoming weekend for Clemson, moving up into the end of the homestand and then the key ACC opener at Duke. Now, yeah, a nice, nice home schedule for the Tigers. And you see the Tigers doing the same thing that, that uh, Kansas State did with a, with a runner on first base with two outs, extremely deep. And it's English who has a single and a walk. Struck out though to end the fifth inning with a runner at second as he takes a strike from Lucas Malstead. K-State has been able to create every inning since the first. Fly ball left field by English. Taylor is there fighting the raindrops and he'll make the catch as we get set to stretch on a rainy Wednesday night. Stick with us. And uh, so it's all about the process and, and staying positive and boy, he certainly has come back with six of his last 11 and just done a great job, had some big hits this weekend as well. And of course, he had that three home run game against USC yeah. Upstate that started this spurt in the last couple weeks as Taylor takes low. You have to imagine there was so much pressure because all of the news outlets were talking about how Taylor was quitting football to focus right. on baseball. Right. And those first few weeks, it's impossible to ignore it. Yeah. Pop up, foul territory. Pelletier gives it a look. This Kansas State team had such a historic season last year. They had their first Big 12 sweep since the Super Regional year in 2013. That was a home sweep against Oklahoma. Their first 30 win season since 2021. And Coach Hughes was, he's, he was, he was upset that they didn't make the tournament. Felt like he needed to add a little bit of RPI. So here's a, a double trip for top 10 teams. They faced Tennessee yesterday, Clemson right. today. And, and even if you do get beat, it, it it probably is more beneficial than you know playing uh, you know someone who is not nearly as as strong. They started the season ranked 24. Yep. As Taylor goes down on strikes. Wentworth continues his strong outing. He's looked good. Third strikeout for Wentworth, who came in with two on, two out. Got a key strikeout in the fifth. That's a good frame job by Pelletier. Yeah. And that was in the strike zone on, you know, the, it, was, it was close. <laughs> it was a but good pitch. Yeah. Too close to take for but sure. two strikes. Now Blake Wright 0 for 3 today with a couple fly outs. Right. That's a good pitch. That was tight. Senior captain. Add some insurance here in the bottom of the seventh. That's a good breaking ball. Pushes the count to 0-2. And, and I really like that pitch after the first pitch was a slider that had a little bit of break. The next pitch, he took a little more off of it, so it had more break and broke out of the strike zone. Oh, and a one, two, three at bat. That was a perfect encapsulation of Wentworth's ability. Yeah, and... and a perfect en encapsulation of, of pitching. Yeah. I mean, just locating, changing speeds. Location and change speeds. Well, Kansas State, without their number one option in the bullpen, Tyson Neighbors, a preseason All-American, preseason number one closer in the country, according to D1 Baseball. He's unavailable due to an injury. Their number two guy, Ty Rule, was hurt against Holy Cross, so... Coach Hughes is certainly going to hope that Wentworth can maybe ride them to the finish line here as Mathis has gotten off to a hot start this season and tonight. Well, roles evolved during the course of the season due to injuries. Guys get hot, that type of things. But when you have a chance to step in and do a job and you're doing the job like Wentworth is tonight, you're going to see some more action. Two balls thrown to Taylor. All strikes since here for Wentworth in the seventh. Looking for a fourth straight zero on the scoreboard. 
great take inside. The entire Kansas State infield shifted to pull was all running in. Yeah, they, uh, they're feeling a little momentum here. I mean, they've, they've really, they've been knocking on the door every inning, and Clemson has kind of gone quietly the last several innings. Here's a look at Culpepper practically playing second base, and again, he thought that was strike three. Went worth it. I mean, that's what a guy could do in the middle of the game. We talked about this. If he could come in and get out, get them out of what was the uh, fifth inning, and then post a couple of zeros to keep, give this explosive offense a chance to get back in the game, we've got a good, good ball game here. Here's your telltale signs of a hitter locked in. Mathis watches three. That was pretty. Yeah, that was a really good. I excellent discipline. Batting average has propelled up over 400. As a 3-2, oh, off the leg of Wentworth. Culpepper is there, nice. though. And the inning ends as Wentworth strides off the mound with mixed feelings, Ooh. certainly some pain. Clemson basketball with a key senior night win over Syracuse last night. Lobliner looks to keep this fair, but won't succeed. Ooh. Yeah, that was well out of here. In fact, if you wanted to, as a Clemson fan, you can catch sporting events every single night here this week. Softball doubleheader tomorrow. Baseball, softball, gymnastics tripleheader on Friday. Baseball and softball Saturday and Sunday. Hoping for some good weather. All the broadcasts available on ACC yeah. Network Extra. A tremendous job in the control room for everybody oh, working. These guys, they do a great, great work. But uh, it's one of the reasons you have so many retirees move close to like a Clemson because they, they, they make their social life just, you know, coming to uh, athletic events. Quick work from Lucas Malstead to strike out Jaden Loebliner to start the eighth. Yeah, really. Good looking pitch, just tied him up with that fastball that ran in on the right-handed pitcher. About 31 pitches, 21 of them strikes from Malstead. Well, that's it's all right. Yeah, I mean that 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 is the percentage that that, that Coach Bellinger is looking for. Daniel Rivera chases the first pitch. Hall runs in, fights the rain, and makes the grab for out number two. So Mike Clemson finds that first one, two, three inning since the first, and it's up to Rafael Pelletier. It's been a smooth first start out in right field for Hall this season. Well, he's he's got he's a young man with a lot of ability. Plenty of options for yeah. Coach Package. You got Jack Crichton who's gotten the nod a few times. Right. Good looking. Backwards start to the at-bat with a breaking ball for a strike. And Pelletier, who had the sacrifice fly his last time up. And I love that. Uh, you know, and I've talked about this before, the first pitch breaking ball. It doesn't have to be nasty. A get-me-over curveball. Yep. And now it's 0-1. Now, you know, you're, you're out in front already, and you really have a huge advantage as a pitcher. Nine-hitter Bishop on deck. Pelletier's having himself a great trip out to Orange Land. He was uh, 0 for 0 with three walks yesterday in Knoxville. Now he's 1 for 1 with a walk and a single. He's reached in 15 straight dating back to last year. Surprised he's in the eighth spot, Coach. Adds depth to the lineup as Pelletier takes and it evens the count. Just misses. Allstead in control, though. I mean, he was looking to hit the outside corner there, just missed it. And that time he didn't. Not missing anything. Three strikeouts in three innings for Lucas Malstead. Brilliant bull lead here in the, in the bottom of the ninth, and you've got a new, or bottom of the eighth, excuse me, you've got a new pitcher for Kansas State and Blake Dean. Fifth appearance of the season for the freshman out of Georgia. Went to North Cobb Christian High School and started his career with three shutout innings against Boston College out in Arizona. Most recently pitched this past weekend, two and a third, one run allowed against UMass Lowell. So a 5-7-3 ERA, an opportunity to try to mow through the middle of this lineup as K-State's bullpen has thrown four shutout innings. Boy, they've been really, really good. Jimmy Obertop will lead things off. 
First pitch strike here from the righty. Dean, you wonder if he has any family? A little under three hours from Ackworth. Uh, oh, I'm sure that he's got a lot of family here and they're glad to see him. This is laced out to left and Obertop has his first hit tonight. And the leadoff single sparks the bottom of the eighth. Looked like a change up or a hanging breaking ball. Inside part of the plate. It was a breaking pitch that just kind of hung there and that was laced. Yeah, you wonder about the bunk now. Saw Chufo put down a sack in the second. Ground ball to the pitcher in the fourth and a strikeout in the fifth as Chufo swinging away. Takes a healthy hack. No play. We'll play ball to Culpepper. He will flip. Oh, I think the second base. Day thought Culpepper was going to keep it. He should have. And it's a calamity of errors. Yeah, that that was just a lack of lack of communication there. But that I mean, he just really just should have walked right over there. And yeah. So a fielder's choice. E6 puts two on with nobody out. And this is an opportunity that the Tigers took advantage of against South Carolina. Runs in the eighth inning to add insurance as we will have time called by the offense. Now you will see a bunt. Yeah, it looks like it. Everybody coming in to... Yeah, I mean, that was just a tailor-made double play really, ball. My yeah. goodness. I mean, all he had to do was kind of take a couple of crow hops there and, and throw the ball as he's stepping with his left foot on second base. And A bit of a miscommunication between Culpepper and Day, and and that's kind of surprising. They they have they played together for quite some time. They've, three years they've been playing together, and so it's interesting that they would have that. But again, it's just it, it's communicating with the conversation, stretching Naraki due to come to the plate. Pete Hughes also having a chat with his infield on the mound. If you do, if you, boy, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of tough with Naraki. He's swinging the bat so very, very well. Uh, do you ask him to bunt? And then you got your, your eight and nine guys, but there's been a lot of production from the eight and nine hole guys this year for Clemson. If you ask me, I'm not giving up his bat. You know, you're up by three, bottom eight. Yeah. Never a bad thing to show bunt, let the defense. Well, they, they certainly are. Yeah defensively thinking bunt. But, uh, you know, big difference between a three and four run lead takes you away from that grand slam, beating you with a grand slam. So two on, nobody out in the eighth. And Culpepper wasn't even covering the bag there. Yeah. All out of sorts, this Kansas State defense in the eighth. At this, at this point, yes, but... Hinder Leiter on deck, Hall in the hole. And the bunt is placed, and it's a foul ball. It hit Naraki while he was in the box of the count 0-1. I mean, if you're going to sacrifice square around earlier. No reason to run either. <laughs> Let yeah, the bunt go square, down and then square run. around earlier. And I'm not sure. That was, yeah, that was not a good pitch to bunt. Got to get that bat head way out in front of home plate and bunt strikes. Put your... Put your bat head at the top of the strike zone. Anything above that is a ball. Look at how much he's choked up. Bunting again. Oh, he's just jabbing. Well, you ask a freshman to bunt, the results are going to be middling. Yeah. So now the count 0-2. You know, a lot of people... Don't, don't like the bunt in this situation. I, I, and, and again, I, I think it's the philosophy that Coach Backich believes in and his players believe in it, and it, it's been successful. I like it being consistent for the most part. I don't, I don't hate the bunt. I just know with the amount of baseball I've seen, you bunt with first and second, there's, there's a higher chance there's a force out at third. So there's, there's opportunities. Now you have to put a perfect bunt down. You got a catcher at second base running and overtop. 
And look at this. The freshman delivers with a base knock to left, and the bases are loaded now for the Tigers. Way to battle back. Breaking pitch. Inner part of the plate. I told him he shouldn't have bunted. <laughs> yeah, right? How's your reaction when the when the guy you ask you love bunt, it. No, it's yeah, as a coach, thing. you love it. It's exactly. a way to battle, you know? I mean, this is this is what you're supposed to do. Well, it has been the year of the Grand Slam through just three and a half weeks of play. Might Hinderleiter add his name to the list of Mathis, Naraki, and Purify. As Dean fires a strike. Transfer from Davidson. Three home runs this season, including one on Saturday. Hmm. Squared one up, back, and the count 0-2. Oh now you got to battle. Again, we talk about this all the time. Man on third, less than two outs. Got to put it in place somehow, some way. Shorten up, play a little pepper. Infield about halfway. Got him. Nope. Ooh, just inside. That looked good. <laughs> that was a good pitch. There's the base runners, Obertop, Chufu, and Naraki. One, two, he did not go around in the count two and two. Yep, that's, boy, that's a good call. And they're two for two on a check swing so far tonight. Great job by this umpire crew. Count fills now for Hinderleiter. Mm. The plot thickens. Boy, after beat, get being down 0 and 2, a really, really nice at bat for Hinderleiter. Laying off that pitch in particular, good discipline. RBI walk for Jacob Hinderleiter, and Clemson gets that first insurance run here in the eighth, and they are nowhere near done. Uh, anytime. You get the bases loaded with nobody out. Defensively, it, it, you know, if you could escape with giving up one at the most two runs, you feel like, okay, this has been okay. Uh, this is, they're, they're still in big trouble here. They could really, really blow this game open. Nate Hall. Reach twice, not wasting any time. Cole Pepper's gonna come home, and a perfect throw gets the first out of the inning and cuts out the run in Chufo at home. <laughs> that was right at him and made the right decision to go home, and it was a forced play, so just like throwing to first base, literally. Yep. Except the, the guy at third has a, a, a lead. He's four or five feet closer. It's Cole Pepper. Keeps the bases loaded, keeps the score 6-2. Canarella. It's a good breaking ball inside, 1-0. Two home runs, 12 RBIs this season. The freshman All-American a year ago. Freshman of the year in the ACC. And another chopper. This time, Culpepper's trying to turn two. Day isn't ready. The throw is somehow held on the bag by Bishop. Boy, we've got some. What a mess. An RBI ground out there for Canarella. Yeah, I, I guess Day was playing so far in the four hole that he could not get to second base on time. And again, a, a miscommunication between the, the middle infielders. Nearly a colossal mistake. If that throw is a little bit more off the bag. Culpepper Running out of patience here late in this game. Yeah. As Will Taylor to the plate for the fifth time today. One swing and this game blows the top off. One and one from Dean. Men on, yeah, men on second and third. Just look what a hit'll do now. 9-1-2 due up in the ninth for K-State. 
as Taylor goes fishing. Right at the top of the strike zone. Dean probably feels like that he's been out of the inning twice already. Yeah. Been four ground balls to the shortstop. No kidding. Yeah, and, and really that, <laughs> the, the, the first miscommunication between Cole Pepper and Day was, was huge. Because yep. it was double play. It's five you know, two two outs. to the ninth. Yeah. yeah, two outs and nobody on. Instead, two runs have come in. And the count fills to Taylor with right on deck. Canarella, who went 0 for 4 on Sunday to snap what was a 17 game hitting streak. Now 0 for 5 today, but with an RBI and a robbed home run. As Pelletier yeah. wants to chat about. That was, a, that was a big play by Jones out there in center field. That was, that was gonna be a home run. That was a two run shot in the sixth. Yeah. At the time, it would have pushed the lead to 7-2. That's where we sit now. So Taylor will walk and the bases will load for Blake Wright. Second walk for Taylor. A one for three day. These guys have so much fun, don't they, Ron? It has been a lot of fun watching the culture change through Eric Package in a year and plus. Yeah, it, it, there's energy. And I, I think the players have really enjoyed, again, I watched them uh, really come together as a team last year, got off to a bit of a tough start as they were making some adjustment, but it culminating with you know, a 17 game winning streak last year, just really tough to do in an ACC championship. Right, a focal point of that 27 and six finish to the year. Chases a fastball and the count 0 and 2. Well, hitting's tough enough, but when you're swinging at pitches that are six inches outside, that really makes it difficult. Eighth hitter of the inning. Mathis awaiting on deck. 0 2. Ooh, to the backstop it goes. Hinderleiter will score without a throw, and it's 8 2. Well, let's call that a wild pitch. Yeah, an unusual inning. Three runs, but only one hit, two hits. Only two hits, but they were both singles and numerous opportunities for Kent State to get out of the inning. Just... Fly ball to right. English, a lot of grass he's going to have to cover, and he will not get to it. It drops foul. Hmm. Another opportunity for the Kansas State defense to make a play. Unable to do so. Let's see how close he got. He didn't take a great route. So new life for Wright, a one-two count, two outs and three in here in the eighth. Ripped right at the shaded second baseman. Ooh. Day playing at the left side. Yep. This game continues to show us the shift. <laughs> in Lagernick. He is a, a funky left-hander. And what he needs to do is throw strikes. If he can, he's a guy that can be effective. And I'm not sure that they use him in a situation other than where they have a 6-1 lead. And a changeover at first as Jack Crichton comes in for Jacob Hinderleiter. But back to Lagernick, he was a top 40 freshman in the nation by perfect game baseball, top 25 in the ACC, and already one of the top prospects for the draft, making his fourth appearance out of the pen, two and two-third. Got hit hard in that blowout loss to Kennesaw, but a pair of 
Shutout innings against Xavier and USC Upstate as he takes on the 9-1-2, led off by David Bishop. I like his, I like his, I mean, he's just a, got good size, nice smooth delivery. Ball comes out of his hands with a lot of explosiveness. Ingram on deck, Jones in the hole, and the stakes a lot lower with the three spot in the eighth inning. Yeah. Inside out, grounder, and the ball always finds you when you come off the bench, doesn't it? Crichton with an opportunity and a leadoff single for Bishop. And again, a, a, you know, a ball that's just not hit very hard at all. But you put it in play, you never know. Makes seven out of the nine innings for the base runner for Kansas State. They have left nine. Chuck Ingram. Fifth at bat with a single and a run scored as he takes low. I'm not sure that Crichton needs to hold the runner on in this situation up six. I guess you want to keep the double play in order, but maybe play right behind him. All you really want to do if, if you know, if you're Ligurni is throw strikes. And I know you don't like that first hit, but that's, I mean, that's part of baseball. It, that ball had eyes. 1-1 one, one slides its way down, and it's 2-1. and one. Wildcats are scrappy. You have to give it to them. Yeah. They were able to battle back. They were down 15-2 to two yesterday. Pushed it to 15-5 with some late runs. Uh, I mean, they've had nine hits in this ball game. One more than Clemson. In fact, Jones and Culpepper both 0 for 4. Might have an opportunity to change that as there are two on with nobody out and Brendan Jones due up. That's just a bit of a freshman mistake, isn't it? Trying to be too perfect. You just got to fill up the strike zone when you have a six-run lead, and you can see that Overtop is going to go out there and remind him of that. A little action in the Clemson bull, bullpen. I don't know that it's urgent at this point, but... Can never be too careful, though. Dangerous batter here in Jones. They hit 341 on the year. And... Good the lefty lefty matchup is Lagernick misses low. How happy are you if you're a Clemson fan? You got those three runs in the eight. Ooh. Of course, you wouldn't have the freshman on the mound. But... Probably not. 2-0 the count now. He needs to take a deep breath, regather himself, and fill up the strike zone. If he gives up a home run, they're still up three. That's a tight pitch. But you don't usually get the strike call when you're throwing a lot of balls, do you? Not if you're all over the place. That's correct. Barlow went five, allowed one run. Malstead, three incredible innings of relief. And now back-to-back -back walks have the bases loaded with nobody out for Kalen Culpepper. See a visit. Let's, let's take a look at the Clemson bullpen here for a moment as Rob Hughes starts to warm with a little urgency. Yep. Probably see a visit, yep. Just cannot walk people. We've you know, we've talked about this. If you give up base hits, we, you know, as a coach, you, well, you're just looking for outs. I mean. And Culpepper, I mean, and, and it, you know, if, if he comes up there with, with a huge swing, you say, no, no. You, you, yeah, I would rather have a, a double, double, double. A double, correct, than a home run, because a home run ends your momentum. Rally killers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The old Grand Slam rally killer. Yeah, yeah. 
Down by I six. Actually, no, I would take a home run right yeah. here. <laughs> but it, nonetheless, you get the point. Defense shifted with right over to the left side of the infield as Culpepper takes a ball on the outside corner. A game that has been tight for the majority. That is the biggest lead. Three run eighth thanks to Culpepper's mental miscues and so he's got a chance to resurrect it as Hughes falls behind 2-0. and oh. The top shortstop prospect started as a third baseman, moved to the captain of the infield. I'll tell you what, Ron, if he can just guide one to the right side oh. of the infield, he's gonna get a base hit. Sure, he could hit a 15 hopper that direction. There's a look at the defensive shift. Ooh. Boy, nothing but fastballs. Well, we talked a little bit about Culpepper in the open. He has 19 career home runs. Four of them this year. There you see K-State still looking for their first tonight. Oh, and late on the heater. Only 90, Culpepper sitting off speed, and he's yeah. down on strikes. 91, and you've seen nothing but fastballs from Hughes. Good movement, though. I'm, I mean, that ball was really right down the middle. I'm not sure how he <laughs> missed that. I don't, I don't think he's seen the ball very well here tonight. Big strikeout for Hughes. Still stiff competition, though. Brady Day, the reigning Big 12 Player yeah, of the Week. I think he's been on fire. One for three today, but a double in the fifth and a walk in the seventh as Hughes finds the zone. Day is able to tomahawk one out to right. Station to station go the runners and the score is eight to three here in the ninth. Yeah, high fastball or change up. Just kind of hung up there. Not a tough pitch for him to hit. That that was that was a hanging changeup. So Bishop comes across to score. And the freshman Nick English with a key opportunity. Tying run still in the on-deck circle for the Wildcats. Ground ball ends it. Potentially for Clemson, as Hughes able to find the zone. That's a key strike one. Nothing. Well, that was a changeup that he threw last pitch, but nothing but fastballs other than that. Count evens. Single in the first, or excuse me, the second for English. A walk in the fourth. Retired by Malstead in the seventh. Pop up, infield fly will be out number two. All right, we'll secure it. Clemson one out away. It's down to the DH and Jaden Lobliner, the final chance here for K State in what has to have been an exhausting 28 hours. Oh, for this team? Yeah. Oh. Well, they're young. <laughs> I mean, they can do it. It's tough on the coaches. But uh, I, I think it's a good experience. Get on the road with your team. And I like this club. They, you know, I, I, they're solid in the infield. They've made, had some miscues tonight. But uh, you can see where they have some talent and some offensive uh, firepower. I mean, they scored 37 runs last weekend against UMass Lowell. Congratulations. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Pick to finish fifth in the Big 12. And now down to their final strike here tonight. As we once again would like to thank our entire crew. And all of you watching at home. On this presentation of ACC Network Extra. Yo 2 Hughes racks the strikeout. 
and sets down low blinder to give Clemson their 10th win.